Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12 and this is the video I've been dreading. <laughs> so back in a oh, number of months ago on version 11 we built the Stormwreck Isle adventure series. So not just Stormwreck Isle but the first half of Fandelva and below. And you can tell by this little uh, icon here, we've not touched it since. It has never been opened in version 12 um, or the updated D&D &D engine. But we've been going through the automation series. We've been looking at what is working. We're stable. Yes, there's still some tweaks and improvements happening to MIDI QOL, to Chris's pre-mades, to Gambit's pre-mades. But we're because we're locking in, it's quite stable now is probably if you're still on version 11 and you're waiting to uh, to update to version 12 now is probably the right time um, but how is that going to mess up your existing game world well this is what this video is about <laughs> and I've left Stormwreck Isle deliberately knowing that at some point I was going to do this video and I have no idea how bad it's going to go so obviously I am on uh, version 12 of Foundry, my game system is the D&D 3.3.1 engine, which is where we need to be for the stability of automation and not just automation, but a lot of the other things. So I'm going to click on Stormwreck. Now, obviously, it's going to say, hey, you're going to, uh, this was last on uh, version 11.315, uh, and we're going to version 12.331. So it's, it's a big jump. So uh, let's do that. I'm not going to put a reference in because um, I'm going to live with it. You know, be be more sensible to me. <laughs> uh, this might take a little while. Migrating data package. Uh, that wasn't that wasn't that long at all. I was expecting that to take a while. All right. So let's log in as my game master. And let's see how horrific things might be. Oh, I'm not sure about you, but that made me worried. <laughs> Just hung there for a bit. All right, so it's with JB2A needs to be enabled. Uh, levels migration, MIDI concentration depreciated in favor of the fifth edition. I'm getting lots of little warning signs and things like that. Not necessarily a surprise at all. So for me, one of the first things I'm going to do is to go to my mod list. Oh, I forgot I've got the tavern people here. Let me change scene first, away from the tavern people, so you haven't got all of the chatting in the background. There we go, back to the map. Um, that's nice. Scenes work, basically, anyway. So one of the first things I'm going to do... Look at my active models I've got for this. I've got quite a few. Yeah. I've got sequencer, tokenizer I've still got on this. I don't really use tokenizer anymore, although it, it is good. Build a bonus... Not a million miles away from what I was using, but what I want to do is I want to come in, I want to use World Settings Sync. So if you're not sure what that is, go look in the um, in the add-on playlist. Um, there is a video about Ripper's World Setting Synchronization. So before doing this, I went into my Curse of Strahd world, which has got everything set up the way that I want to play, and I set that as a master world. Uh, you've enabled module gambit pre-made, which yeah, whatever. Oh, oh, doesn't <laughs> doesn't necessarily want me to activate that. Can we uh, can we try that again? Nope. You have enabled modules pre-made, but its dependency region attacher is not enabled. Oh, right. Okay. Well, that's an easy fix, isn't it? And we'll have region attacher then. Thank you very much. Um, that's why it wouldn't let me do it. Okay, that's fine. If I actually read the error message first time rather than just going, oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <sighs> Remember, kids, <laughs> don't do what I do. All right, so using Ripper's um, World Sync, it is now asking me, it's saying, hey, but in your other one, you don't have about face, so deactivate that. You don't, you're not using 5e stat block importer, so deactivate that. Uh, DD5 animations, D threads, you see, I still had D threads on the list here. I'm not using that anymore because I don't really need to. Chris's pre made has, for what I use it for, made it redundant. So I'm just going to go sync all. I'm going to hold on to my pants. It's going to warn me that this is not reversible because it's not. That's why the game wants you to back it up. 
unable to open a compendium, Curse of Strahd, summons. Oh, okay, that's not a problem. Uh, it's now talking about all these agnostic settings. Do I want to set my combat booster, turn marker, transparency, and all of those things? I'm going to say yes. Because what it's doing, um, it is saying, oh, what mods have you got? And it's bringing in all the mods that I've got in the other world, and it's taking off the mods I'm not using. It's then saying, oh, what about all the settings you've got in those? Do you want those as well? Um, or shall I get rid of those settings? Come on, just get on with it. Um, and then it's add applying those settings where it can. Now, it's not necessarily able to do it for every single thing, but it's going to give it a darn good go. And I'm suspecting, there we go. Okay, so the box has come up again. Now, I think what this times up one is, um, effect expiry queue. I think when I exited Curse of Strahd, I had a spell effect on one of my characters that was a time event over time. So it's, try it's saying, hang on a minute, I need to apply that to a particular actor, but that actor doesn't exist here. So um, yeah, no, don't worry about that. And this active auras one, I think is something similar, probably the same blinking spell, isn't it? So I don't need to do those. So all my agnostic settings are in, my system settings, I don't need to worry about that primary party. Again, that's because my actors are different. Um, so no, I can say I'm happy with that at this point. So let's pick a scene. Um, let's go for, I think I've got things like puzzle test. Uh, let's go for Stormwreck Isle. Let's go and have a look at the Clifftop Observatory, which is one I quite like. It's nice and bright. Now, we know the problem with the uh, using the maps from the module have the lines on whether you like it or not and things. But we did a, we did a little bit of work on here. Let's, uh, let's delete Haley out. Uh, and then we're just going to go through and we're going to check what works. Let's clear our chat here. So obviously the scene has loaded, which is great. Um, We've got some actors here. Let me find, because it's been a while. Uh, I can drag Haley out. I want to drag her out nice and fresh. Here she is. Oh, sounds are playing. That's good. Uh, I can, indeed, I can open the journal by clicking on my map pins. Uh, Haley's turning. I didn't use that because uh, I... <laughs> So that is just a case of this auto rotate. I didn't have auto rotate in before, so um, it doesn't know what to do with each actor because I'm not set it for each actor in this game world. Uh, so this works nice. Yeah, we can move along. Uh, can we go over walls and stuff? Um, I can't remember exactly what I did with walls here. There are walls over here. Yep, it's stopping me going through the walls. Those are all correct. And you can see lighting appears to be working as we would probably want it to. Ah, yes, look, distance. The closer we are to those walls, we can see over them. So that all appears to be working very nicely. We've got the sounds playing. Um, we can turn on our light bridges that we set up. Those are all working. So actually... From a scenes point of view, now remember, version 11 didn't have regions, so we've not used regions anywhere, so we have got rain in this tower, okay, because that wasn't a thing. <laughs> so definitely one of the things we are able to do is go, oh right, actually I need to, I'm going to make a new region, um, I haven't got a door on there or anything like that, but I can add a new region onto here, um, draw one out, and um, in fact actually let's do that. Uh, draw a polygon. We can draw our region here if I can use a mouse effectively. Very rough, not going to be keeping this particular thing. And I can say, right, there it is, that's my region, that's indoors. Um, behaviors I want for this region is going to be uh, suppress weather. Uh, yes, thank you very much, thank you very much. So I haven't named it or anything, but we should be able to see now no rain indoors. I'm not sure if you can see that very clearly. Rain over here, all around the outside. So there's things like that to do. Um, and it's not because it's broken. It's just we have new functions now. So that's all really good. I'm happy with that. Um, what about combat? And what I am going to do is turn off those that water for now. Um, but what about combat? How broken is combat? Let's grab this lot. Throw that into combat. I've got my carousel so that's as expected uh, let's roll everybody's initiative for them it's 
brought in my Daiso Nice settings and everything else as expected. There we go. Everybody gets a go. Uh, and then we can start combat, which is over there. All right. So, so who's actually go it is? Ah, and because, yeah, I think there we go. It's your go. So let's, uh, yeah, let's have a bit of a play and see just how badly this stuff is going to work. So, oh yeah, of course, I've got this on as well. I just... <laughs> I forget what I have, what what monsters and things and, and stuff I've got activated. Um, now, normally I have this hidden... Oh, no, we're in combat. I do have it active. I, just, oh, I don't in my automation world, but I do in Curse of Strahd. Yes, of course. It's a problem with changing worlds and having different worlds for different purposes. Uh, most of you won't be too affected by that, because even if you've got multiple worlds, you've probably got them set up quite similar rather than being a bit of a nutbag like myself and being all over the place. So we have our blood drain attack. So let's try that blood drain attack and see what happens. I hate that targeting thing, but again, that's just one of the settings that it hasn't updated correctly. So when we're making an attack, we have managed to hit, we have done damage to that kobold. If I stop targeting that kobold with that horrendous targeting thing, it's taken damage and it's applied the bleeding effect so on the face of it already this is working um which is great of course we will encounter problems we will <laughs> that get excited all right so we're going to attack straight back i think um yeah we're going to turn our token because again what i've got in there dagger attack 12 that's going to hit we're going to do some damage and we've killed it it's died um, and it's got his little icon on fantastic uh, we're going to now attempt to move over here there we go ah right no what i was the reason why i was moving is yeah all right stop it <laughs> stop it Haley. um reason why i was moving is to see if these guys got uh, attacks of opportunity almost guarantee the reason why they didn't it's because these are hostile and this is hostile, so it's not triggering. Um, it's not triggering this as being. See, there we go. It's hostile. It's not triggering this as being um, an enemy of those. It's tr figuring that they're all the same. There we go. Now it's neutral. The Sturges are all hostile, so there is a difference between that allegiance. Now it is indeed. What now? He did that at disadvantage. Why did you do that at disadvantage? I'm not sure why that was at disadvantage. Should it have been? <laughs> so the Sturge's attack was normal. The Kobold's attack was normal. That was... Okay, we're going to have to work that out. That might be a little issue that we've got. Okay, let's just move on. We're going to get to Haley's go soon. So now if you fly all the way uh, over here and then you fly here and then you fly here and then you fly here, brilliant. So the kobold is getting its attack of opportunity. Let's clear that chat. I was fairly sure I said yes on that. Let me try that again. Yes, there we go. So it's giving advantage on those attacks of opportunity in the moment. And it probably shouldn't be, should it? Let's see what happens when Haley has her go. All right, Haley, you're up. Um, obviously, she should not be. Somebody dropped in the comments that when they updated, it did this and it set them at their players were all get. I think they said their players were all getting advantage, which clearly isn't something that you would want. All right, bonus action. What can we do bonus action? We can do something like, let's try, let's really try something challenging and do spiritual weapon. I haven't updated it to Chris's version um, on this character. Should have medkit in here. Let's medkit these 28 available. Thank you very much. Might take a moment. Boom, and it's bringing in my versions for most of this stuff, which is great. So all of these stuff should work better now, including spiritual weapon from Chris's pre-made. All right, so let's pretend that we didn't do that and do that again. Um, do I want to proceed anyway? Yes, I do. Thank you. I'm going to have a flaming 
mace please and I want it to be uh, let's be purple and now I can pop that out boom and there's Haley's mace well, spiritual weapon works so beautifully part of Chris's pre-made so um, I've, part of this bonus action means that the mace gets a go which is great so the mace ooh uh, Yeah, uh, and that's this is this is me rather of course, the attacks made from Haley, stupid boy. So I've targeted it, and from Haley, I've now got in my favourites my spiritual. Oh look, it's here, it's here. So I can move that token, but it's Haley correctly making that attack. So spiritual weapon has made that attack and has killed it, which is great. Um, and now we can. I'm gonna just cheat somewhat, and I'm gonna move Haley into over here. Uh, that spiritual weapon did not attack at advantage, which is good. Uh, this guy, before I go any further, I want to make this guy um, neutral, not friendly, but neutral as well. Okay, and then we get Haley to make just a, a normal attack. Haley, you've not got any weapons because I've not set that up yet. Um, you should be having things like your mace and shield is already on. Let's pop your mace down here with your shield thank you very much because obviously i haven't you you've literally seen me come into this world i've not set any of these bits up right so Haley, i would like you to make your mace attack we're going to make that an 18 only rolled one dice that's correct it's rolling damage bomb killed that kobold outright as we would expect so that's all working uh so you're dead mate Again, that's a setting that I've not changed to say ignore the dead people. You're not dead, so you can come in and attack Haley. Thank you very much. Blood drain. Not with advantage. So I think the other one got advantage because... No, why did the other one get... No, it got disadvantage, didn't it? Hmm, still not sure why that other one... For that attack of opportunity was at disadvantage. How strange. I, one of you is going to already be writing in the comments. It's because of this. And I'm going to go, oh yeah, of course it is. <laughs> I can't brain. Not while I'm talking to you guys and trying to do this. My brain just doesn't do that many things at once. Um, but okay, that's good. So that was a normal attack like that which is what we want. Now he decides to use his movement to fly, flee away. Uh, Haley Longbreeze, you're not going to use your hand axe, thank you very much. You're going to use your normal mace to make that attack of opportunity. It's a 12. It's a normal attack, which is good as it should be. Boom, and we're going to kill it. So attack of opportunity is all working brilliantly. And it's appropriately saying we used our bonus action, appropriately um, got our spiritual weapon up, and appropriately got the fact that we've used our reaction. So, so far, this is pretty darn good, isn't it? It's It, it really, really helps using Ripper's um, world sync and just going, hey, look, just can you update from a world that I've already played with? So maybe that's a tip. If you're going to be updating a existing game world that you want to be playing in or if you're foolish enough to be doing it in mid-game, well, <laughs> kind of going, I've got a week to make sure it fixes. Maybe that's a tip. Is start a completely new world in version 12. Bring in all the mods that you know you want to use. Configure them. Play with it. Get your combat working correctly. And then use Ripper's world, um, world settings sync. And make that your master world. So that when you update your actual game. You, you know your actual game world that you want to play in. You can use that. And it will set everything up pretty close to what you want. So there's been a couple of bits, you know, like the, the, the way the carousel is positioned and things, where it's not quite brought in those bits exactly. Fine. It's not an issue. But it is bringing in, you know, you saw I had to go to Haley and do, oh, yeah, I've got to go through the med kit and stuff. Of course, because I've never updated those items on Haley before. But that all worked. So I'm really pleased that this is not as difficult as we thought it might be. Um, whose actual go is it? It's, oh, it's Haley's go. So let's let's cheat. Let's cast a bit of... I must have a target before I do that, right? Target yourself. 
I mean, I hate this targeting thing, but again, that's just an option. Can I cast Shield of Faith on myself? Yes, I can. You can't... Yep, so I've got my Shield of Faith. That's on. Brilliant. Can I cast Healing Word on myself and that dude? No, nope, can only target one. That's fine. That's what we want. Let's cast Healing Word all the way over there. I know I've used my bonus action, but I'm cheating because I'm the DM. I'm allowed to. Oh, yeah, there we go. No longer bleeding. And that kobold has healed up nicely. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Chris is pre-made that med kit. Regardless of whether it's bringing Chris's stuff, Gambit stuff, Misk stuff, stuff that I've put in my compendium, because it automatically brought that in, of course. Um, it's really not that bad, is it? I'm really surprised. I thought this was going to be an absolute dog's breakfast of a situation and just kind of go, it's totally unplayable <laughs> and rage quit and never look at this again uh, and, and potentially be in a position of going, Do you know what, I'm just going to build it from scratch. I don't need to. I really don't need to. Um, let's take another look at, let's pick a, a Fandelva um, location. Um, what about something like Cragmore Castle? I have left that combat running, which is naughty. Shouldn't have done that, but there we go. Uh, Cragmore Castle. So we're going to have a similar thing here where um, everything looks absolutely fine. Um, walls are all still in. Whether they are working exactly how we want, we would just again just run around your uh, run around your um, your thing as if you were a player. Check doors and everything else, but that all looks absolutely fine. Uh, lighting, we've got no lighting in here. We've got, uh, oh yeah, we've got that. That one there. Um, that's it, it's the only light in the whole place. <laughs> but we've got these items here. Item piles, yep. Again, it's brought all of that in, that's no problem. Uh, we don't need you, thank you very much for that. That's fine. <laughs> uh, I don't think we've got any sounds in this one, no. So all we would need to do is check our creatures. Now we know Chris's pre-made doesn't have the uh, this working for monsters yet, um, but we might need to do like, for example, I know Nimble Escape. There is a, and I might not have put it, maybe Nimble Escape was okay. I'm fairly sure there was a different version that didn't quite work. But again, I haven't even, I've not even looked at my settings, have I? Not even gone into my settings and done things like, uh, where's G? Come on, alphabet. I haven't even gone into gambits and said, hang on a minute, right, what do I want to use from here? So, high templates, that's my normal stuff. Uh, I don't normally have that, or I haven't yet got those on. Yeah, these are, see, it's brought these settings all through, which is perfect. Yep, opportunity attack, we've seen that working anyway. You know, so it's brought all of those through for us. General options, that's fine. What was the top one? Oh, check for updates. Yeah, it's fine. Dialogue options, I don't use that. Use interface. Um, yeah, it's brought this through as well. Yeah, um, hidden compendiums um, and stuff. That's all fine. That's all normal. I'm just amazed how good that transfer over is using World Settings Sync by Ripper. I mean, these guys, all of these guys, they're so clever. Posny for the MIDI QOL staff. Um, you know, obviously Chris and his team, Michael and um, and Am Amber. It is Amber, isn't it? Gosh, embarrassing. Um, you know, Gambit, uh, Ripper. That's that's so, so clever. Even if you don't like it, <laughs> you've got to admire what they're able to do. Right, I'm getting carried away and getting all mushy-eyed again, aren't I? Additional compendiums. So this is only using Chris's and Gambit's. It's not looking at MIDI item showcase. It is looking at mine though. Um, that should be number four, thank you very much. So maybe that's what it was. I thought, To be honest, I thought it was a Gambit's one. But I might have been lying. Yeah, yeah I reckon there isn't one. Oh, it should have automatically brought in Spotlight Omnisearch for us, which is brilliant. So was it a skate? Nimble escape, disengage. That's, yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, uh, oh, hang on. It's my fault for having Spotlight Omnisearch set to default to the middle of the screen. 
you can change that. Absolutely, you can change that. <laughs> Same as you can learn to spell, because clearly I can't. That's why. So it's not picking it up because it's actually a completely different item. Um, and I would want to change that in my Actors tab. My goblins have this nimble escape. It is Gambits. Yeah, there we go. So it's just not going, oh, hang on a minute, that Nimble Escape is the same as Nimble Escape Disengage. Um, it's not linking those two things. I think you can do that. I think you can make that link in the stuff. Um, but if I change it in the Actors, whenever I drag a Goblin out, it's going to be correct. So that's absolutely fine. But this, this one actually works. I know that because I've obviously been playing with stuff. Um, so yeah, I can just go through and check all of my monsters. You know, the, the weapons are fine. There's nothing wrong with those. It's only if they've got special abilities that you might need to check, but um, yeah. Not sure what else to kind of check without going massively off piste and, and just going all a bit insane, really. Um, you know, yeah, we got, again, it's just monsters to check and things like that, you know, this giant spider and things like that that we would check, but we're gonna do regardless before we get our players in. Um, what do you think? If you are waiting to update to version 12 from version 11, if you're sitting there at the moment going, I want to update, but I'm worried about X, Y, Z, leave that in the comments because assuming I've got something similar in here, I can come back in here and I can actually test it, have a look at it and come back and say to you, you're right, that's gonna be an absolute nightmare or no, actually that's fine. Because I, I totally understand. If you've got a game world already running, the recommendation would be is keep keep your setup until you finish that game. When you're ready to start a new game, that's the time to to look at start building a fresh in version 12, etc. Um, right. So really important couple of bits of stats is not to close that. We are in version 12. This is stable build version 12 331. D&D game engine really important 3.3.1. Um, but it seems to have brought through, we only did a little trial of combat, I don't want this video to be like three days long, we only tried a few little bits there, but our spell casting, our gambits and our Chris's stuff, our midi QOR stuff, that all on the surface worked, including our opportunities and things like that, which is brilliant, um, and our scenes just don't need that much work. Uh, for somewhere like this, Am I going to, for these buildings that are enclosed, I want to go and put regions on so I can keep the weather out. Uh, it means using weather for somewhere like this is a bit more useful because it actually shows the difference between inside and outside. We didn't have that when I built this. It wasn't a thing. <laughs> I had to use FX Master and, and, and masks and things like that, which was it absolutely worked and it worked really well, but it wasn't the friendliest way to do it, was it? Um, so look, all of these walls are appear to be in place. There's no reason to think these walls don't work. Uh, they've bugger all lighting on here, I think. Yep, no lighting on this map anyway, and there's no sounds on it. So uh, overall, that isn't bad. Don't blame me if it goes hideously wrong, but I'd be quietly confident to say as long as you've got time to test things and to maybe tweak the odd problem, pretty much good to go have I got any scenes with monks that this is a point isn't it where did I I mean I've got puzzle test did I use monks active tiles much I'm not sure that I did to be honest I can't remember now did I I think I had a pit trap here I have got a pit trap here this is where I originally started the quest to get pit traps working <laughs> Um, so I have got that in here. Uh, no idea if that is going to work properly. If I look in my Actors tab, in theory, I've got a folder called Prefabs. It's an actor, it's not a tile. Thank you. In theory, I should be able to drag this out and go, there's my pit trap, and then get Haley to walk across it, and it work as expected. This is this is pushing it. Acrobatics check, please. Oh, couldn't find... Right, we've got an error. Weirdly enough, it's the same error I got when I originally did this. 
<laughs> somebody commented the other day they were looking back at my traps video and they were um oh it was no they were looking back at curse of strad when i originally put the um the pit trap in the dungeon of the death house um and it came up with that error and they were laughing at me because i got stuck on it um trying to work it out okay so that's not perfect i might need to look at it um, but that's more than likely to be to do with my settings where I've told it what to use to do those roles, uh, which of course should be Monk's Token Bar is what I'm using to do those roles. So all I need to do is to make sure I've set up my tiles and everything correctly, so that it's actually doing that. So my triggers and stuff, um, my actions, acrobatics check for Turgoon players. So it sh this is what should be using uh, Monk's Token Bar, but it's not. And that's probably because I just need to go into Monk's Token Bar, look at the settings and stuff. Not gonna do that now. I'm not gonna debug everything in one video because I've almost finished this video three times already. That's it, I'm gonna call it to close. Like I say, um, leave a like if you like it. Comment if you've already done this and what problems you found uh, because it'd be interesting to know what issues you've had. Like I say, somebody did have this thing about um, using lots of, uh, it was getting advantage and disadvantage wrong. Um, if you're looking to upgrade, does this give you the confidence to kind of give it a go? Or if not, what are your concerns? And I'll see if I can look at those for you using this world um, and just how much work you might need to do to fix those individual problems, if they're even a problem. They might not be. I mean, I've got silly things to do, like go through uh, and update my actors with their CPR and Gambit stuff. Um, stop my tokens from turning, but actually, you know, I'm just going to do that from here. How many players have I got? I've got to go through these guys. There's not many of them. Just set their token attributes to not spin um, and stuff like that. Easy peasy. Right, I'm going. Take care, everyone. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.